Well, well, well. Today's video that was chosen to be done was Could Doom Slayer Take Down Dracula and Raid the Dreaded Castle of Dracula from Castlevania for good? And to answer this question, I have brought a friend of mine onto the channel who is quite familiar with Doom Slayer and in fact just had an amazing video on him. Doom Slayer vs. Kratos, and that is Jock, if you want to say what's up. Hey, what's going on, fellas? I hope you guys are all doing well. Thanks for joining us in this video. Yep, and we are going to have a lot of fun today. So the question is, if Doom Slayer, one of the most infamous badasses in video game history, was to run into the plight of Dracula from Castlevania, which, by the way, we will be considering both game, uh, game and anime slash show, whatever you want to call it. We're considering both as they do connect in canon. So we will be considering all things Dracula. And this is going to be a super interesting question. to see if Doom Slayer can get the job done. This is not the same hell he is used to. And with that out the way, I'm going to introduce Dracula, his castle, and the many aspects to it, which makes him incredibly dangerous. So for those that are not familiar with Dracula, he is the main villain in Castlevania, in particular both the show and the game. In this portrayal of Dracula, we see him using most famously a castle to get most of his deeds done, as when he invades Earth, he brings his castle along with him with just it landing, causing devastating natural disasters such as tsunamis. And when he lands, he finally inflicts hell upon Earth. And how does he do this? Well, as the king of the vampires and the first to really use vampirism, the difference between vampires in Castlevania and most other series is that this is directly a war against God. What that means is Dracula in becoming a vampire was seeking direct conflict with the work and livelihood of God in the verse. In doing so, he has also produced an absolute entity of chaos called his own castle. In Dracula's castle, it contains something called the Infinite Corridors. Why is this important? Well, you see the Infinite Corridors, every corridor and every hall within it is an entire dimension or universe. In fact, within it are several different universes split by space and time itself. On top of this, it contains the future, the past, and different timelines entirely. And it even leads to places like hell itself, the extra dimensional realm where souls go. These levels are considered infinite or countless in depth as hell itself, just within hell, has countless levels. So in conclusion, this castle, which has even death itself roaming the halls, it is at most likely multiversal in nature given its infinite or countless universes thus making the power, the intrinsic power of the demonic Dracula, multiversal in nature. So this is the castle he will be presenting against Doomslayer, and this is the creature that controls it, who Doomslayer ultimately has to face. Is he capable of defeating this Dracula in his castle? Well, I'm going to turn it over to Chuck to explain Doomslayer briefly, and then we will get into what would happen if this were to play out. Okay, so for those that haven't played Doom, basically you play as this guy who was sent to Mars uh, after after disobeying orders, and he found himself like shooting a lot of demons along the way, and uh, he got so good at it that he eventually found his way to hell itself, and he was fighting there for such a long time, literally eons, and like the uh, and, like the testament, right? Now I'll get I'll, I'll get into why the eons actually means something else, right? I don't think it means like literal eons, right? Anyways, like he was fighting for so long, and he eventually got uh, buffed by the Divinity Machine, and this made him even more powerful. And and along the way, he like fought, uh, you know, pretty much everything you can think of, like Marauders, like the uh, the Titans, the uh, the the Doom Hunters, you know, shit like that. And then he fought, and then he basically fought against uh, the Con Maker, who uh, in the lore are able to like move through space and time, right? And this is without teleportation, right? And they can monitor, like, the whole multiverse. So they're pretty, like, highly advanced beings. And Doomslayer was able to keep up with her and beat the fuck out of her, basically. And then Icon of Sin. Icon of Sin was able to damage parts of Hell in the older games. And in the newer games, he's able to create a black hole that can consume the universe, right? 
Um, so the intrinsic power of these beings and speed is already pretty crazy. And then, you know, after we get to the DLC, he fights against uh, Davoth or the Dark Lord, right? And kind of, and like Dracula, um, he also made like hell itself, right? And all of creation itself is basically a part of him. So his intrinsic power is pretty damn great. Now, I do know that, um, you know, people would argue that Doom Slayer doesn't really scale to beating him uh, fully because Daboth was depowered. But I think if you're the creator of everything, right, including time and space and all these concepts, it, I think if you're able to overpower that, you should scale somewhat to that, right? What would you think? I, I would agree with that. That's a reasonable take. Yeah, like it would it would be like saying like defeating Dracula in this case wouldn't make you able to like destroy uh, uh Infinite Corridor or something like that, right? Yeah, or it would say it, like you don't scale to the uh Dracula's castle. That it'd be weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh the thing with uh Davoth and Hell is that Hell is stated to be unlimited by dimensions. Now there's a couple of ways you can interpret this, right? Uh you can say it's at least um like six to seven D. Uh, because Erdak is called the sixth dimension, and it's also called a higher dimension. And the thing that's really important with Erdak is that even though it's a higher dimension than ours, um, Hell was still outside the bounds of it. Hell was not like discoverable by them, even though these guys have such a crazy, like extensive, like knowledge and uh, catalog, right, for all these multiverses. But Hell was like outside of their range, right? So this implies that Hell is an even bigger dimension, so seven D, right? Uh, I'll say at least 6D, honestly, if you want to interpret that Erdax 5D, but I'll say 6, 7D at the bare minimum, right? And then, if you want to take it even more literally, you could be like, okay, unlimited, that could imply infinite dimensions, right? So, or you could even say it's uncountably infinite dimensional, right? So we could say it's like hyperversal to outerversal, right? Um, I don't really buy this scaling as much, but I will leave that up to you guys. I think it is possible, but I'd say he's more than likely like at least in the multiversal ranges, right? Or, uh, you know, since it's a higher dimension to be complex multiversal, still be multiversal though, you, you know what I mean. But, uh, you know, he should be, he, he, he should easily be able to move through time and space, right? And damage beings that can create a multiverse. So he should, he should scale pretty well against uh, Dracula in this case, honestly. Fantastic. And now that we've gotten both of these characters out the way and what they're capable of, let's say Dracula, in response to his wife being killed, did not know Doomslayer was vacationing with his family and puppy. However, he dirt naps the family, kills the puppy, and has incurred the wrath of the Doomslayer. How does this fight go for us? Well, the first thing we will address is the elephant in the room. Can Dracula box with Doomslayer? What are your thoughts on this, Chuck? Initial thoughts. Um, I don't know how much experience he has, but um, the Doomslayer was like really gifted even before he got his buff, right? So let's think about that. Even before he got his buff, he was already so gifted that he beat the fuck out of all these Night Sentinels. And the thing about these Night Sentinels is they've been fighting demons for like a long time, right? um like they like they, they, they've been fighting them like in a timeless realm and this is what i this is what i was going to come back to as well is what was uh so eon in the basic sense basically means that it is an indefinitely long period of time um or it can even be a billion years right but here's the thing time doesn't really pass in hell because it is outside of it right it's beyond it actually uh it is unlimited by time right so i think if you're fighting there for any any portion of it, of time compared to us, it'd still it'd be like hundreds or hundreds of thousands, millions of years, billions of years, right? So if these guys are fighting for what could be like a long time, right? Um, then you know the Doom Slayer is like even more well experienced than they are, uh, or I mean not experienced. Uh, he's like much better than they are, right? Even with less experience, that tells you that this guy is like on some some other level, right? So, and not to mention that his stamina is crazy. He was able to fight demons for, as I said, eons, right? And it's heavily implied that it was without, like, stopping for anything. You never even need, like, food or anything like that, right? Um, but uh, to answer your question, I do not think that he would be able to box a Doomslayer because he's a lot more experienced in kind of hand combat. I think he even beat the D one of the... T um, I think he even beat one of the Titans with just his bare fists um which is fucking crazy because these guys cannot be brought down by typical weaponry right so 
just think about it. Even before he got trained by the Night Sentinels, he was cracked enough to beat them. And then think about after he did, you know? So, and the buff. So, yeah, I, re I really don't think he'd be able to box with them, though. I get that. I I would tend to agree that eventually he would be overwhelmed by the likes of mm. um, Doom Slayer. I do feel Dracula has several ways, though, and I think this is where it gets into a really fun what if. Dracula has plenty of ways to get out of Shit's Creek. He can teleport. First of all, there's like many layers to killing Dracula. He's an immortal. You have to kind of kill him astrally, physically as well. He can survive without his physical body. He can come back just like his castle can from seemingly nothingness. It's a whole bunch of ways. Uh, my point with that is when he starts getting his ass beat, which inevitably likely would be the case, he can dissipate into smoke, turn into a bunch of bats, regardless how he wants to do it, he can dip to the castle. So our question becomes, how does the raid of Dracula's castle go? Doomslayer has infinite timelines he has to search. Hell itself, death is wandering the halls. And somewhere inside is his boy, Dracula. So I'll start off with my thoughts on this since I had you go first on the last one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think this is a fascinating one because there's several ways you could technically trap Doomslayer. I, but I, I do have to ask this. I don't remember. Does Doomslayer have a way to teleport? Mm, no. He just has like his um, it's like um, dashing boots, basically. Okay, so... He wouldn't technically have a way to avoid the BFR if he were to get cut off in a timeline. However, Dracula's never shown that or showcased that ability to like sever timelines and stuff like that. He just has the infinite corridor within his castle. And so this is important because I don't think BFR would be used. I definitely am comfortable saying Doomslayer can hang in the pocket with whatever he encounters in these timelines. Um, I don't see him searching them that much. He would likely go through the infinite corridor, which is infinite in nature, but we've already gone over how Doomslayer has extra dimensional scaling for both speed and AP. So he has higher levels of the speed meta, if you will. Given this, he should be able to search the halls. Even if he goes to hell, we know how comfortable he is in hell. He would probably have a blast going through the infinite layers of hell. Eventually, I do see him encountering Dracula and finishing the job. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think he would certainly have the stamina to like look through everywhere if he really needed to. Um, and uh, I, I, I do want to ask you though, like, does Dracula have any interesting hacks that could potentially work here? Because Doomslayer, like, he doesn't show that many resist. <laughs> he doesn't really show that many resistances. But uh, he does have like soul. Um, he does have soul destroying uh, resistance uh, from the armor de armor barons and then the uh, lost souls. But I don't know if it would be fair to unless you, unless you work it through like cosmology, right? That they're like they have higher dimensional hacks or whatever. Um, but I mean, they can be killed by guns from the earth, so I don't know, man. Um, maybe the demons don't. Maybe, maybe like the demons don't really scale to the cosmology, but let's just say they do, right? I think in that case, you could argue that their soul hacks would be better than whatever Dracula has. I don't know if Dracula has any of that, but um, yeah, like I'll say, like potentially through some ways that he hasn't shown resistance to. Maybe, yeah, maybe there's I, a way. Out. Uh, Dracula's hacks. Mostly, first, he can produce and create the castle on a whim, as well as teleport it wherever he can teleport himself. Um, he can transubstantiate himself to anything he wants. Um, he can shapeshift to whatever he wants. He can summon armies of from hell and bring them forth. He can also travel the countless layers of hell at once. There is several interesting hacks he has but none i would see putting down doomslayer he has a bunch of hacks to buy time figure out a way to deal with doomslayer in which mm -hmm. i'm not quite sure he could um, because if we were to give the narrative benefit that dracula could hop around the multiverse go looking for stuff to help him 
this would also mean the people that are against Dracula in verse would inevitably find out about Doomslayer. And they're like, oh shit, this is a guy that can beat up Dracula. Let's make sure we take him to where Dracula is and make sure he finishes it. So even if yeah. you gave that narrative benefit to Dracula, I don't think it helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I also thought of another another interesting um, like matchup here would be uh, what if we go by game mechanics instead of the lore? Because if we go by that lore, then I think it's pretty clear that Doom Slayer would stomp, right? Oh, if we go by game mechanics, just who's stronger? Yeah. Um, if it's just like game mechanics, probably Dracula. Mm, how so? Uh, game mechanics wise, I've seen the Doom Slayer because I've lost in that game. You get ripped <laughs> apart by demons. Dracula's uh -huh. <laughs> the one that sends the demons in the game. So it's uh -huh. like, uh, <laughs> I think it was game mechanics, Doom Slayer. Uh, he'd probably get treated like a Belmont, like Doom Slayer. They'd probably mm. make him like another Belmont. He wouldn't, he probably wouldn't scale to Dracula off game mechanics. Dracula can also do all that crazy shit with his castle in game. Um, so he'd probably just drop the castle on Doom Slayer. And just be like, all right, go to sleep. Here's a yeah, for Doom Slayer, um, I, I, like even just going by game mechanics, uh, I'd say like, I, I, I wouldn't really know which level to put him on, but I know he can at least like break down through walls, right? Uh, he can break. And they can like, I think Dracula throws around too. a black hole at one point or people that scale below him in the game do. Damn. And then uh, he should be at least faster than lightning. Faster than meteors and shit in the game. Uh, I don't know if that would make him anywhere near able to blitz Dracula, but probably not, right? Do you do you, do you dodge like light and shit or what? Um, I think he does. I'm double checking right now. It mm -hmm. it would be it would be a lot closer if we did it this way. Uh, I I feel like Dracula would take it with just game mechanics. Even though yeah. that's like a real dishonest way to scale the characters. Um, like, we, we know in the games, um, it's shown he can just pop back up with game mechanics if he's killed because he's like a part of the castle and the castle's a part of him. Um, there's Cyclops within his stuff. Like, there's stuff within his um, castle in game and like part of the game mechanics that would pop out. And fight Doom Slayer that can like freeze people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it might get a little more crazy with that, to be honest. But I don't, I don't think Doom Slayer can take just the game mechanic one. Yeah, yeah, that's agree. Yeah, he would just throw the castle at him. Yeah, and another thing I wanted to to bring up uh, is really quick uh, f for those that might, that might be confused on like how Doom Slayer like wins by the by the lore, right? So if we go by how extensive like the hell is and how big uh, how much bigger dimensionally it is than Erdak. Um, if you have like a, if you live on a higher dimensional plane or you can destroy it or interact with it in some way, right? Or like in this case for Doom Slayer, it'd be like fight someone that can just create it, right? So you should you should have that attack potency, right? Is uh think of it this way. I mean, let's say you could blow up a universe and like on a fourth dimensional scale, right? That would probably like and then you say on a higher dimensional plane that could only destroy like a planet or something, right? You get what I mean? Yeah, and then not to mention uh in some of the descriptions of hell, there was verbatim. Bound by the forces of chaos, hell is unlimited by the boundaries of space, time, or dimension. Hell is mm. itself a living thing, an entity possessing certain undeniable sentience. So it's the fact that it's beyond time, space, or dimension, primordial, um, beyond eternity, all these things, it has plenty of arguments. Plus, like at one point, Doom Slayer was stated to be destroying multiverses, uh, battling hell. So there's plenty of arguments that just put if he's not outright at the level, like a level above Dracula, he's comfortably, in my opinion, got better arguments than Dracula does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 
we have come to the conclusion that despite how strong Dracula is, despite how broken the castle is, the many different layers of it, eventually Doom Slayer would overcome it entirely. Um, the only way Dracula could really win here is if we went with game mechanics um, and just talked about wall level shit, <laughs> which would obviously be ignoring a lot of the lore. But yeah, anyways, guys, make sure to check out Chuck's channel. He recently did Kratos vs. Doom Slayer going crazy right now. So definitely check it out if you haven't already. I'll be making my own interpretation of that. And I'll be bringing Chuck back very quickly onto the channel. As well as I'm doing a couple videos over on his as well. In which we will be... Actually, I'm going to let Chuck describe it. Go ahead, Chuck. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty sick, and for those that have been on my channel for a while, you you might you might have seen that one Marvel video I did in the Tournament of Power. So we're gonna we're gonna be spicing it up along the way. Yep, we're doing Tournament of Power, Marvel, and DC. So it'll be cool, and it's gonna be epic. But yeah, guys, thank you for tuning in. This was our thoughts on Kratos vs. Dracula. Or oh, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck uh, <laughs> my bad. Oh, fuck the ending up, but I ran it back. Thank you so much for watching. This was Hood Doom Slayer. Take down Dracula. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we'll see y'all later. Peace. Yeah, peace.